I'm Matthew Dulles from the Science of Psychotherapy, and here's John Arden talking about neural networks and feedback loops. Check it out. I could offer a larger picture, the macro view, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, it seems to me that we are uh, a ongoing self-organizing process that involves multiple layers of feedback loops. So let me get concrete. These feedback loops include epigenetic processes, include psychoneuroimmunological processes, in other words, your immune system, include attachment dynamics in the interpersonal relationships, include habit circuits, include lifestyle factors, and include the mind's organizing networks. Now, I just babbled off a whole lot of different things, but just think in terms of, let's say, six or seven interlocking feedback loops. We can take each one and step through them. Would that be a good idea? I can almost see the diagram, yep. <laughs> Let's do that. Okay, so in the, in the book, I do have these feedback loops, right? So I have okay. the circle and the circle and the circle and the circle. You could make each one of those circles and label them differently because they all are interacting anyway. Mm -hmm. I start with self-organization, partly because of complexity theory, but we don't need to get off into the minutia there. But the con concept is this, you're Matt, you're Richard, I'm John, in part related to our way of keeping ourselves organized and we need a mind to do it. Well, we haven't really agreed on what the heck a mind is, but we now in neuroscience and in psychology have now agreed to a general sense of these mental operating networks. Yep. Three of them stand out. Let me just run through them. One is called our executive network. And Matt, you've been probably the best of the three of us in this conversation, keeping us focused in the here and now and practical. It involves the dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex. It involves working memory. It involves our ability to track, roughly available to us for 20 to 30 seconds, and then we're off to something else. Hopefully that something else might relate to what we were into the previous 20 to 30 seconds. Right. <laughs> right. And so that executive network, critically important, certainly as we progress into adolescence, into our mid-20s, and uh, somewhere in our 60s, we might lose some of those cells, certainly the glial cells in the dorsolateral area, and our ability to track kind of diminishes unless we keep focused and keep training ourselves. That's why mindfulness and this whole new craze that's not new, but uh, nevertheless is so important because it is hard to keep ourselves focused. Mm -hmm. So let's say the executive network, critically important. Then you have another network called the salience network. The salience network is who you are within your own body that then generates a sense of emotion. And so there's a lot of researchers and uh, theoreticians that have been talking about this network, which involves the anterior insula, the anterior cingulates, uh, even your gut bacteria and your vagus nerve system. So in other words, what's going on in your gut? You have a gut feeling. You know, as I'm looking at you, Matt, because the, the camera's on you right now, I'm looking at you nodding. I'm having a reaction to you. I'm having emotions and my emotions then influence my cognition. So my salience network, me being John, you being Matt, you being Richard, we have a sense of who we are as how we feel within ourselves, and we generate emotions that have an influence on how we interact. Whether or not you're moving your hands and in therapy, reading those interactions, as, as Richard was talking earlier about breathing patterns and so on, this network incorporates those in the interaction. Okay. Yep. There's another one that we're often in. In fact, we spend 30% of our waking hours in, and that's our default mode network. Mm. Our tendency to drift off, fantasize, kind of uh, ruminate, or perhaps make sense of where we were before. Uh, Richard, you have, have been a colleague and a collaborator of Ernie Rossi for, for many years and, and co-wrote a wonderful book uh, with him. And Ernie used to talk about the ultradian rhythm. 
And the ultradian rhythm is essentially the same thing we've been talking about, the default mode network, identified roughly about 18 years ago. And it involves the posterior uh, cingulate, the medial prefrontal cortex, our tendency to kind of drift within ourselves, and hopefully it has some continuity with the other two networks. Mm. When it doesn't, we have a tendency to kind of go off and do a lot of stinking thinking, mm. as the AA and NA people often talk about, how a person that sits around and just ruminates and gets into negativistic thinking can groom a depression for themselves. So these three operating networks have to be in sync and they keep us organized. And they also derive a sense of you-ness from our two long-term information banks, our implicit memory bank and our explicit memory bank. That's the facts and the, the autobiographical memories, the episodic memories and so on. Yeah. So this is self-organization over time. And it's hard to define. It's kind of like, that's you, no, this is, that's you, and this is you, this is you. Together, these operating networks work together with these information banks to make who you are, who you are, who I am, John, Matt, Richard, and so on. Well, if you want to know more about the science of psychotherapy, come across to our website, thescienceofpsychotherapy.com, and our podcast of the same name, and learn more about the science of you.